Praise the Lord for this opportunity. Meet together, fellowship together, and just rejoice. Amen. God is very good to us. And so we just want to praise Him this morning and thank you for being here. And let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, we certainly want you to know we love you this morning. And thank you for each and every perfect gift that you lay in our hands. And we pray, God, that you bless the service this morning with your presence, that you would lead, guide, and direct us in a way that we might. Exalt, honor, and glorify your precious name. Father, we love you. Thank you so much for loving us. Bless each one that's here. Uh, bless those, our Father, for whatever reason we're unable to make it today. We pray, Father, that you be with them. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to ask our pianists and some of you to come uh, with one of our books and worship together in our, in our hymn. Turn to page 153, The Lily of the Valley. <clears throat> I have found a friend in Jesus. 
the day we're looking forward to it. You know, that's, we live, we look, we wait, it is your time. And only he knows it may not be that long. The, the, the apostles were looking for him to return in their day. And so we need to live under that expectation that it can be any day. We really do. <clears throat> Living like that will help us live to really glorify his name. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> let's take our Bible this morning and turn to the book of 1 John. Chapter number five. <clears throat> Chapter number five. Always really appreciate Miss Emily and the songs that she picks out because of the, the meaning and the uh, songs was enough to give us a lift and get us ready. But in the book of First John, chapter number five, we're going to begin reading in verse number one and read down through verse number five. <clears throat> Verse 1 says, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. <clears throat> Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Father, bless the reading of your word. Speak to our hearts today and encourage us and help us along our journey to be overcomers. Father, we just want to praise you for everything you do for us from day to day, week to week. And Lord, then to have the opportunity to come and worship you on this Lord's day. You bless now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we look in the Word of God for a few moments, uh, I want us to think about a thought title if you want to call it that who are the true overcomers who are the true overcomers that word overcome mentioned in verse 4 and 5 and stop the thought a lot about that well you read the scripture you think about what they say it's not hard to see who those overcomers are you can spot them in the Word of God. I think you can spot them in life. The Bible says, and I want you to think about this with me, that person must be born of God. He must be a Christian. Must have know something about that spiritual birth from above. The only way we can be an overcomer in our Christian life and please honor him who loved us and died for us on the cross. We're going to have to know him. We're going to have to know his father. And we're going to have to walk in a way that pleases them. Uh, I'm going to kind of whip back over to John's gospel chapter number three. And I want us to think about some things. There's a whole lot that I'm going to be trying to think of here in the message this morning. But you notice what it says. Uh, there in that verse number one concerning this thing of being an overcomer, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God and everyone that loveth him, that begat loveth him also that is begotten of him. So I, I thought a lot about that and I thought, you know, that's the key. You can uh, you can go and get a degree and you can get a real good job working for some company and uh, do just fine in life. But you're going to have to get the degree and most of the time you'll have to have the diploma or something to show them that you've got it before they'll hire you. And then they'll check you out on what you're supposed to be doing. 
So I thought about a lot of that, and I thought, you know, even in our walk today or in the Christian's life, there's one thing that is of an absolute necessity. It must be very jailed in our heart and mind, and that is that we have then exactly what that verse says. It says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Mm -hmm. Now, a whole lot of religious folks don't hang on to that too swift like, but I do. Uh, I do because I believe the word of God. Amen. Jesus had opportunity to deal with a religious man. There's a lot of religious people in the world. That's right. In our day. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus got to deal with a religious man in his day. His name was Nicodemus. He had seen, he had heard of what Jesus was doing and that done something to his heart and mind. His religion, what he was bound and tied up in, did not demonstrate the life that Christ was portraying. So Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and began to ask him some questions. And uh, he, he let him know in verse number two, he said, uh, he said, we know, we know that thou art a teacher come from God for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. He said, there, there's some things about your life as well as your ministry and the things that you're doing that the natural man cannot do. Jesus said something to him. I'm going to just read some verses, parts of verses in verse number three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says again in verse number five, he says, uh, Except the man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then he says in verse number six, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Verse seven, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Verse number eight, he said, so is the very last phrase, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. You know, you, you read that and you kind of get it in your mind that Jesus believed that the man was going to have God on his side, in his side, and doing things for him spiritually, he had to experience something. That experience had to be being born again. That's right. Born of God. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you something. That, that is a must. And as we live today and we're in our world living and we have opportunity to talk to people and they may be church folk. They may go to church somewhere. They may not. They may just was raised up in a church. But listen, there's one thing that separates born again believers or really Christian people with just religious people is what happens inside and it takes a new birth. That's right. Being born again. Mm -hmm. Something has to happen. Our old man is dead. Let's face it. Oh, we're, we're walking around. We're much alive. But I'm going to tell you what. Spiritually, man is dead. Mm -hmm. I got this thing in my mind after I got saved in a few months. I don't know exactly how long it was. Uh, it, it really jailed in my mind because of the preaching and teaching of the Word of God that everybody you see is either on their way to heaven or on their way to hell. Mm -hmm. And if they're on their way to heaven, they've been born of the Spirit of God and the Spirit lives in them, or they're not and they're going to hell. I mean, I just, I got to where everybody I see, and I wonder, are they alive or dead? Mm. Lost your the walking dead. <laughs> That's just a fact. And so, I got to where I, I'd stop people on the street. I'd stop people at the laundromat. I'd stop them at the grocery store, especially if they look like the jobbies. Amen. <laughs> uh, I kind of stayed clear of some of them shifties. I mean, you know, if I hit on them, I slam you. But I didn't worry about the jobby people. They're not that mean. But anyhow, uh, I, I would stop them and I'd talk to them, and and I would witness to them about whether they were saved or not. And some some well, I'm, I'm going to church. I said, I didn't ask you if you're going to church. I asked you if you're saved. Have you ever been born again? 
，我弄个小的呀。嗯，什么不一样的？他弄小的。Let me ask you something. And this is just kind of crossing my brain. I thought about that. I thought, you know, how many, how many bats do you think is going to populate heaven when we get there? How many bats? Oh, you're looking at me real serious. I can tell you how many. None. Being a Baptist will not get you to heaven. That's right. You have to be born of the Spirit of God. Amen. I don't care what church you go to. I'm not going to pick on nobody's church except us. But there'll be no Baptists in heaven. There'll be no Methodists in heaven. Pentecostals are nobody. Listen, folks. It's those who have been saved by the grace of God and the Spirit of God has moved into their heart. That's and right. And born again. Amen. So Jesus made it real plain to Nicodemus. Yet yeah, you're religious. You're part of the upper crust. But I, I'm going to tell you something. You must be born again. Amen. And, and I read that to you no more than about five or six times. If Jesus believed it, I'm just like him. I believe it too. Yep. Folks, listen. We And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to tell you. We need people to know Hey, once death knocks on your door, there's no more opportunity to right. get ready for heaven. You've got to get ready before that. You've got to make plans. Amen? Who are the true overcomers? That's what I the message. We will not be an overcomer spiritually. We will not be an overcomer for the next world unless we prepare for it. There's not a, there's not a basketball team I watch sometimes on TV, my, me and my son do, uh, at these basketball teams. I, I still marvel. <laughs> I tell you what, them jokers, uh, they, can, they can shoot nearly from the center line and drop <laughs> it through the basket. It just kind of jiggles the bottom of the net. You know what? They didn't get like that by not practicing, by just joining the team and going out to play. They have spent hours and hours and hours on that basketball court practicing, practicing. I That's right. Get that done. I've only seen one guy as a young man that could do something like that at will. And well, I don't know him. His name was uh, uh, he, I saw him, <laughs> Richard, was it Richard, Richard Gamber? Richard Gamber. Wallace and Richard Gamber. Richard Gamber, we would play basketball, and if it got in the tight and they got the cushion to us, anytime he wanted to, he and I brought the ball down. Anytime he wanted to, he could come right up. If he would get right in that center circle at the halfway mark, I'd be over here to sign. That guy could take that ball, put it in his hand. He was right in the center. He'd just go back like that and do that. I've never seen him miss a shot from the center line. <laughs> Well, the first time he done that, nobody got nervous when we was playing. We got a little tight, he done it the second time, he and I couldn't hardly get two in the center line. Amen. <laughs> I mean, you had to fight to get across. Because that coach and I told him, you won't let that boy shoot, amen. Because he could do it. Our coach told us, I've never tried to, I've never tried to dribble a ball like that. Richard Gamble, I'm gonna tell you what, you can't put two boys on him and then get the ball from him, him dribble it, and then she foul him. That dude could dribble the ball and he could shoot the ball. So guess what? That sure helped us to win a lot of ball games. <laughs> 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 he had to deal with the rest of us crowd. But he was prepared. He practiced. He knew how to do it. Amen. I got to thinking about going to heaven. This ain't a matter of practice. This is a matter a matter of getting in line with the Word of God and the Spirit of God and receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Amen. And that's called being born again. That's right. Amen. Jesus said it. And, and folks, listen, that being born again, that's a total supernatural thing. It ain't something you can conjure up. It's not something you can read about and then say, I've got it. No, you've got to experience it. That's right. Hand. Amen. It's all by what? What does he say here? He said it is by faith. Amen. Those whosoever believeth that Jesus, what? Is the Christ. That's faith. 
A lot of people have problems even with us Baptists. They man, they say, oh, you people just, this faith thing, you believe. Hey, yeah, that's what we do. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Son of God. He is God's Son. He is the one who came and was sacrificed on the cross of Calvary. He's the one who gave his life and shed his blood that we through him, through him, could be birthed into that family in heaven. Amen. My soul. It ain't Baptist. It ain't nobody else's church name. It's God. It's his son. It's through this book. I'll tell you what. I, I praise the Lord for that. This is not a, just some kind of mere profession to make whoever's talking with you satisfied. No, it ain't that. Listen, this thing is real. This thing is real. Yeah, there in John chapter number one, I just want to read this back quick in verse number 12. Jesus said this, to those of his day, he says to them in verse number 12, I want, you, I want you to hear this. John chapter 1, verse 12. He says, I, I don't even see him in verse 12. He says, it's in, it's in, now, uh, well, lost it, I guess. But he, anyhow, Jesus said, that he that believeth in him shall have eternal life. And you know, that, that's, that's the crux of the whole thing. <clears throat> he said, as many as received him, to them gave he life. Amen. We've got to believe in him. That, that's the whole matter of this whole thing. God knows. We, we've got to come to Jesus Christ. And you know what? We've got friends. We've got family. We've got people working with us. We've gone through a horrible two-year, one-year period. It's like, seemed like two to me with this COVID mess. And it, it is just shut everything down. Folks, I'll tell you what we need. To, if we're out, we need to lighten up. That's we right. We need to encourage people yes. to, to come and, and know Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Amen. There's nothing... Nothing like it. He says, he says over here in this in this uh, chapter I was reading out of, and, and uh, <clears throat> I want you to see what he says here in this verse, verse one. He says, uh, and everyone that loveth him, if we love him, who? God. He's the one that begot us. He begat us, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. He brought us to himself through the, the, the spirit and the word of God. And he says, he says, everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Mm -hmm. So what is he saying? He's saying in our English today, everyone that loves God are to love those that God saved, our brothers and sisters. That's right. Now that's what he's saying. Well, you know what? Let me tell you something. There is not a reason for anybody who is saved by the grace of God, who knows Jesus Christ and on the way to heaven, not to love their brothers and sisters in Christ. I've told you here at this church so many times, I know you probably get tired of me saying anything, but you're not my family. You are my family. This side of eternity, my earthly family, if they're not saved and don't get saved, if they don't believe in Jesus Christ, I'll never see them again. That's right. But I'll see you again. You are my family. Amen. And you know, we've got to get that in our minds and in our heart. Those of our church, those that in our community that are saved, that know Christ Jesus, and we have a spiritual relationship with in knowing them as family, they're the ones that God got just like he got us. And we need to love them. There don't need to be no division. There don't need to be no quarrel. There don't need to be no fuss. Listen, God didn't, send, God didn't save us out of that mess to first to remain in the mess. Amen. That's right. He saved us to come out and be ye separate, saith the Lord. So as I was thinking about that, I thought, man, who, who are these overcomers? Well, they're the ones who love God, those who have been born of God. That's, that's the ones. In verse number two, he says, by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. How about that? Now, 
He's telling us up there that we ought to do that. And then in verse number two, he said, we know that we love the children of God when we love God. Oh, I've got to know what this thing over and over in my mind and thinking about the whole thing of it is how we need to do that, how we need to, we need to understand that. You say, well, we're from different families. We've got different names. Who cares? You've got the right name if you've got the name of God stamped in your heart. That's yeah. right. That's what we're looking for. Ah, so. But he tells us here. We know. We know we love the children of God when we love God and we keep his commandments. And that's a, that's a real thing right there. I want you to look back with me, if you would. Back, back up into chapter four, four it's that last verse, so it won't be hard for you to find. It's chapter four, verse twenty-one. I want you to see what he says even up here. He says in verse tw uh, twenty-one, chapter four, verse John. And this commandment have I have we from him that he who loveth God love his brother also. Mm -hmm. I've heard of people. People have said things to me. About someone in their church. I traveled around a little bit. Man, you, just, you can't love that dude over there, man. He's a mess. <laughs> and I'm going to say, well, have you ever prayed for him very much? Maybe, maybe he's got a burn under his saddle and you need to hit him and get it out. <laughs> maybe, he don't, maybe he's not one of the family. Yeah. I'm going to tell you what, when, when tension and division comes between people in the church, you need to find out if there's if they're really a part of the family. Mm -hmm. You hear me? It's good. Not because you're trying to be nosy, because you're trying to try to see how you can help their problem. There should be no division within the body of Christ. That's right. We should walk together in unity, in love, because we love God. If they love God, listen, there ought to be that kind of unity. There ought to be. I mean, the Bible says that. As a matter of fact, he says in that verse 2, he said, when we love God and keep his commandments. A lot of people, they're afraid of that little verse. Amen. They don't want to think about keeping his commandments. But that's what he says. This commandment have I have we from him. We've got a commandment. We're to love one another. I want you to think about that. A lot of people say, well, I've had some. If you, if you mention keeping any commandment that's out of the law or under grace. You don't have to keep commandments. I said, that's funny Jesus talking about keeping son. <laughs> have you ever looked at the word of God? Mm -hmm. Take your Bible, if you would, and turn to John's Gospel. Turn to John's Gospel and turn over to chapter number 13. <clears throat> now, we're talking here about those that love God or to love their neighbor or love their brother. Amen. Uh, but here Jesus even goes a little further in chapter 13. I want you to look at this. Now this is a commandment. He, he, he's not talking about the commandment that the Orthodox Jews kept back there under the law. But look what he's saying. In John chapter 13, 34. He said, I'll give you a new commandment. He said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. And by this, Shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one to another. Is that hard? Mm -hmm. I mean, to love someone. I, I know it's sometimes people are going to hear me say, I'll, I'll tell sisters I love you. Why? Because you're my sister. And, and, and that's, that is a spiritual application that's real. I do, I love you. I can look through hard headed pins. I love you. <laughs> you better watch out. No, let's get out of the world and get into God's world. Amen. Amen. Listen, I, I can look at the older. The other's not older than me around here. I started saying, uh, <laughs> I did years ago, you know, after the COVID, I looked at the older women. And I, they was like a mother to me. Man, I, I looked to them, I honored them. Folks, I'll tell you what, we need to get this thing together. Jesus, even the, the disciples come on one occasion and said, they, they said to him, said, Lord, uh, your mother's out here and brethren, they want to see you, talk to you. 
and he asked him, he said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? Mm -hmm. He pointed out all of those that he was talking to and teaching. He said, these are my mother, my brother, my sister. Jesus had a whole lot to say about us keeping his commandment. Well, I'll tell you what, just a whole lot of Baptist people need to try to memorize this verse. I've been in a lot of churches. I've heard a lot of things. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. The commandments that God gave us can only be kept by those who have been born of the Spirit of God. That's right. If you're saved by the grace of God and know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior and God is your heavenly Father, you can keep these, but if you're not, you can't. You just can't do it. Look there in chapter number 14 while we're at there handy. <clears throat> in verse number 14, and let's look at verse number 15. He said, if you love me, keep. If, if, it's, if it's convenient, if it's all right, and <laughs> everyone's uh, in the right condition. No, he said, if you love me. People say, I love the Lord. He said, why don't you keep my commandments? Keep my commandments. You know what will tear a church down quicker than anything in the world? Division. Division. It'll tear a family down when there's division. That's right. People not getting along. You know what happens? The devil moves in. Did you know when there's no, no people don't love one another and there's not unity, it just opens the door for our enemy to slip in and cause all kinds of problems. God knows. He wants us to show the world. And that's what he says in that verse 35 of 13. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. If you have love, one for another. In this generation, in this age, we're going to have to really get into the Word of God. And I think we're going to have to really try to do some things and see some things. Let's look, let's look here in this 14th chapter just a little bit see a few other things he said. Look down, if you would, in chapter 14, in verse 22. Now it's verse 21. He says, He that hath my commandment, commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, mm -hmm. and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is letting us know that there are some things that you, we need to keep. He said uh, some commandments of his. Number one, we're to love one another. But he has some others too. <clears throat> he goes on and, and look down in verse number 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and will come unto him, and make our abode with him. See, unity, love, keeping his commandments, his words, will allow the presence of God's Spirit, the Father, will come. And the Father will love you. And the Father will uh, not only love you, he said, we will come and, and make our abode with you. We will live with you. We will move in. I always told people, you know, just a whole lot of God's people, Hey, somehow or another needs to get in a position to let God move in, him and his son. That's right. When there's no unity, it destroys. And I hate to tell you, I've been in a lot of places in this United States, Canada, Alaska, and other places, preaching the word of God. And I have seen, after going back a time or two, you begin to hear different people talk. You can kind of see why the church don't grow. You can see why the church is not magnified and exalted by the power of God. God can't do it where there's this unity. There has to be unity. There has to be love. There has to be us keeping his commandments, doing what he's asked us to do. And he said, if you'll do that, he said, I'll move in with you. Me and the Father, we'll move in. 
And that what it says in verse 23? We'll make our abode with you, <laughs> with him. Listen, church, God knows in these coming days, we're going to face some things. There ain't no doubt about it. In our lives, we're going to face some things in our nation. And we're going to have to have that spirit of God dwelling in our hearts and lives. And we're going to have to work together, worship together, walk together in unity and in love. Love will cover a multitude of sin. That's right. It really will. So God's word is just letting us know. Man, his, his commandments are not grievous. They're not hard. They're not weighty like they was in the days of Israel. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you the commandments they had. I look back in there and I'll read them things, brother. No wonder they couldn't keep them. Good night. So many. And it went against all of the brain of humanity. But they had to try to do it to please God. And I'm going to tell you something. Today, with Christ Jesus indwelling our hearts through the new birth, through Christ living in us, we can keep his commandments because God has commanded so little of us. Walk in peace. Live in joy. Walk with the end of the Father. Each one of us know who we are, where we are, and what we're headed. That's the whole thing of this whole situation. He's trying to keep them going. And, and his commandments are not grievous. <clears throat> you say, well, I have a hard time loving old so-and-so. Well, you need to get right with God so you can do it, amen? You say, no, he needs to get right. Maybe both needs to be right. I don't know. I'm just saying, where there is love, there's peace and harmony. Amen. Really? I've had a few people, not many, over the last few years, and hey, you've been married to the same woman how many years? And I thought, well, how in the world did y'all work that out? I said, it wasn't hard. I fell in love with her, and she fell in love with me, and we just kept the love to Amen. I ain't looking at nobody else, and she ain't either. We just look at one another. Amen. I said, it just depends on how you feel about the one you're trying to live with. <laughs> Amen. You may need to do a whole lot more than you're doing. So he shows us the commandments. I want you to see that, how stressful it is to keep the commandments that the Lord told us to do, Jesus told us to do. Look at verse number four, <clears throat> back in our text. He says, for whosoever is born of God Overcometh the world. Yes. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith. Faith in what? Some say, well, I've got faith. But what's it in? Who's it in? Y'all got quite a bit of faith today. Every one of you sitting down on the pews with faith that there's going to hold you up. But that ain't the kind of faith he's talking about. <clears throat> You say, now don't look at us like we're that heavy. <laughs> but who knows how weak them things are? <laughs> Matter of fact, we prop some of them up for you cookies. <laughs> you got, no, they were good cues. They just got kind of messed up on the way up here. But folks, let me tell you something. You have a certain amount of faith, whether you call it that or not. You get in your vehicle and you head out to Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and get on Highway 40. I run a side word trying to get to relief, amen? <laughs> it only takes a little thing called a deer. <laughs> and he can stop you. But you had no idea that that was going to happen. But thank God it didn't hurt the driver. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> Feelings falling. <laughs> but uh, he said, preacher, what are you trying to say? I'm trying to say we need the church hinged together with the glue of faith and love. And it can only be done after we have experienced that new birth in Christ Jesus. That's right. Amen. What we, what you have and what I have in our natural state, you can't make it. You've got to have Christ in here. He's the one that's got to help us do it. <laughs> you can't do it. People coming from different families and different areas, Different raisings and backgrounds. Raisins, I didn't mean out of can. I mean, the way you raised up. 
Amen. Be hard to get along. Just even have worship service. But I'll tell you what. When Jesus Christ is ruling in your heart and life through the Holy Spirit, because of the new birth, hey, you can get along. You can love one another, call one another brothers and sisters, tap one another on the back, and just everybody can leave here with, with a little joy in your step. Amen. And that's what we got to have. That's what the church is going to have in this day and age in which we're living in. So he tells us in that verse 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. Some people, and I know, I know, I've dealt with some people. I've dealt with some of my relatives, amen? Men. They, they've been in church, out of church. In church, out of church. Been married, out of marriage. Been this, they've been that. They just can't seem to get it together. I've had some pretty stiff talks with them. And they'll tell me, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I know. I'm, 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 I'm joining the church for a long time ago. I know I'm all right. I said, if you if you did and you got what you ought to have got to really be there, you wouldn't be where you're at today. See, again, folks, I talk pretty stiff to them. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I do. I talk. I said, now nah, you 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 might have went to the well, but you didn't get the water. And the well wasn't dry. Well, what are you talking about? I said, if you go to the well and the, and the well ain't dry and you don't get the water, guess what? What? I said, you ain't got nothing to get in. Mm. You must have left the bucket at the house. That's crazy talk for me. And they look at me and I said, you know what? You got to open your heart. And confess where you're at and what you need and ask Jesus to come in. Amen. And save you. Yep. I couldn't get him to do that. Oh, I'm all right. I'll be okay. Guess where they're at today? Still out there in sin, still doing drugs, still living like a heathen. Folks, you cannot live for God without Him living in you. You can't do it. A lot of religious people, he was religious, and I won't tell you who he was, <clears throat> but um, he's still out there in the world. I've seen him here and there, and every now and then I try to talk to him. But let me tell you something. Anybody who comes and prays and asks Jesus Christ to forgive them of their sins and to come into their life and be their, his Savior or her Savior, if they mean that from their heart, they'll have his help to walk the walk. They'll have it. And so we, that's the reason we need to get out there in this world. There's people out there, folks. I guarantee you, you can open some doors and the people, oh yeah, I used to go to church. Oh yeah, I know. Well, why aren't you there today? What's wrong? What happened? Some of them tell you that will blow up. See, and I've asked them, you, you mean you would let that separate between you and God just because that happened with somebody in the church? Why, well, yeah, I, I should have never happened. I said, there's a whole bunch of jobs that shouldn't have happened just like you've been out of the church. <laughs> I'm not trying to get you to my church. Listen, I can't listen to my pastor who told me that everything in Lena, Stidham, Fame, uh, Everywhere, plumb into you, following, knocking doors, talking to people on the streets. I've heard a lot of stuff. Well, I'm going to tell you something. With Christ in your heart, and that's the way you, we, nobody can live this life of a Christian if they don't have God in their heart. It cannot be done. Even here, I, I'm going to read you just a verse here in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1. In chapter 1 and verse 22 and 23, Peter talking to the church, he tells him this in verse 22. He's seeing you have purified your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Mm -hmm. Fervently. But he don't stop there. He said, being born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Verse 25 says, But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. It's the word of God. God's word has to be preached. People have to 
stand on God's word and lean on God's word. And it ain't what I think about it. I don't never try to tell y'all what I think about it other than what it says. Because that's what I think about it. It's pure. It's holy. It has the power to change a person's life. Mm -hmm. It has the power to bring them out of darkness into light. It has the power to bring them out of deadness into life and to get them prepared for heaven when life is over. This life is not going to last long. At best, 80, 90 years. And a lot of people go a lot younger than that. My goodness. We need to be prepared. We need to be overcomers in this race toward heaven. We really do. We need to be overcomers. And so the only way we're going to do that is if we are born again by the Spirit of God. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We, we want to think about this victory. Uh, Paul even said something in 1 Corinthians, just want to touch on it just a little bit here. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I just want to read the latter part of this. He says in uh, verse 57, he says, But thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's where the victory is going to come from. It's through our Savior. Yep, he was here some 33 years. Spent about three years, three and a half years in ministry. Helping and training and teaching some apostles. Went back to heaven and told them, so I will not leave you here comfortless. I will pray the Father, he'll send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit. When we get born again, something happens inside of us. You say, what is that? It ain't Jesus walking around here doing his ministry. It's the Holy Spirit of God. The third person of the Trinity, the Godhead, comes and moves in, takes up residence. I had a guy on the reservation ask me one day, he said, Preacher, how can you know? How can you tell that he's moved in? I said, well, let me ask you one question. I said, if your mother-in-law moved in and occupied one of your bedrooms, <laughs> would someone have to tell you she was there? He said, oh, no. Well, no <laughs> Don't want her down here. <clears throat> I said, well, maybe they'd get her saved, and then it wouldn't be bad if she didn't come. <laughs> I don't know what the deal was, but he sure wanted her to move in the house with him. Probably cause of separation. Amen. But, but we, we thank God in, in His Word. He, he lays it out there for us so plain and clear. Who is He? Amen. He said, what, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Listen, we've got to be an overcomer in this world if we're going to do the will of God. That's right. Get prepared for heaven. We can't look around and see everything that's going on and let that drag us down because that's just what the devil wants to do. We've got to keep our eyes on the Word, on the Lord Jesus, and in His house. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you what, man. Uh, they didn't start churches back over there when the, when the gospel first got started in the book of Acts just to, so they could build some buildings. And a lot of them started out in houses. They didn't do that just so they could move in someone's house and have a service. They did it because God wanted people to come together as a family, as a group. And there's power when people come together to worship and to pray. And God wanted that. It was ordained or they never got it done. And it's lasted all the way from then to now. And we need it. We need it. I, don't, I, well, I need it. I've missed it so much. But he goes on in verse 5. And let's try to get through here. He said... Who is he that overcometh the world? That's the reason I kind of my message this morning. Who are the overcomers? True overcomers. Who are the true overcomers? Well, I'm going to tell you what. It's them who believe it. Look what verse 5 says. Who is the he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And if that is not done, the Spirit of God is not going to come in. We can't get saved, and so we have no hope. We will not be an overcomer. We can be an overcomer. We, we can exalt and glorify our Heavenly Father 
and lift up our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, in this ungodly, wicked, unbelievable world we're living in. Folks, it's getting worse. It's getting worse all the time. You say, why, preacher? Because there's less people preaching the Word of God and less people hearing the Word of God and less people getting saved and our nation is headed to the dark ages. We would never have seen during this last election and all of the burning and all of the destruction and all of the wickedness of this nation if our nation wasn't in the horrible condition spiritually that it's in. That's right. We'd have never seen it. It wasn't God's people out there doing that mess. That's right. It was the devil's people. And there's a whole lot more of them than we ever dreamed living in our country. So the church has got a real work to do. We need to we need to witness. We need to get out and we need to we need to keep our lives spit shining. <laughs> That don't sound real good. But we need to be really right with God. And we need to have the power of God on our life. We need to walk with Him. Paul tells us some things in Romans. As I'm closing this morning, I want you to think about We really need to do. We really need to do. We really, I mean, we, we, need to, we need to, I guess, put up our life alongside the Word of God. And make sure that we're still walking the straight and the narrow path. And the Bible tells us in the book of Romans some things. And I'm going to read this to you in chapter 6. Romans chapter 6, starting down verse 11. You could read the whole chapter, but I don't have time to do that. You go back and read it for yourself. But in Romans chapter 6, uh, starting in verse 11, I want you to just look at some things quickly with me. Paul is telling the church at Rome. He's writing this letter to them. He's desiring to get there and to be there. And he's writing this letter to the church there in Rome. He's in prison. He says in verse 11, Likewise reckon ye yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Be alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the only way you can be alive is through Jesus Christ. He said, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. My soul, we're not supposed to do that at all. And then he goes on down in verse uh, Number 13, neither yield yourself members of instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. Yeah, I told you all know everybody that's walking down the street, sitting in the church or sitting at the Mazio Pizza or wherever they're eating, if they are lost without God, they are spiritually dead already. That's right. They're dead people. Mm -hmm. I got a weird mind. I see them as zombies walking and going over where they're going. It's like they, they can't see anything. They can't see truth. They can't see what's happening. He says, as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. He says in verse 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but you're under grace. So he's telling us as Christians, listen, you need to really watch what's going on in your life. Look down at verse number 17, if you're there. But God be thanked that ye were, well, we don't like that word, ye were servants of sin. Mm -hmm. Sure, every one of us was. There's none of us that didn't have sin in our life. You didn't go out and kill nobody. You never went out and burnt your neighbor's barn down or nothing, but you were a sinner by nature. We had that nature in us because of our, of our fall from Adam. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, and we did serve sin, but ye, are, ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being then made free from sin, Ye became the servants of righteousness. Amen. That's what we've got to be today. We've got to take a whole new look at our life and at the life of the world around us and realize there's got to be something done. Do we love our neighbor? Do we love that man that we're working with or that woman that we're working with at work? Do we love them enough to kind of find out where they're at spiritually and if they're lost? See if we cannot somehow bring them to the Lord. I'm going to give you one little 
real life deal. It wasn't me. But I, 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 I met this man. He just got saved a few months before I got to the church. And uh, I was talking with him, and he, he and I was talking. And, and I, I don't, it was something I preached that morning that made, he wanted to talk to me about. And we got to talking. And he told me, he said, You know, I, I worked at a machine shop. And I've been working there for 18 years, right beside a guy. And I got saved here at this church. And I went to work. And I was so excited. And he said, I told him, he said, call him by name. He said, uh, boy, you don't ever believe what happened to me Sunday. He said, no, what happened? He said, no, I went to church. I've been going to church with my wife and, and they're right by going or whatnot. And he said, I got saved. I asked Jesus to come into my heart. He said, well, that's great. That's good. I'm a Christian too. And he stopped and he looked at me. He said, you're what? He said, I'm a Christian. He said, you're a Christian? He said, yeah. He said, you mean you've worked right there on that machine next to me there for 18 years as a Christian and I'm lost and you never one time mentioned Jesus to me? What kind of Christian are you? Mm. He put it on him and he just got something. The guy didn't want to say. And he said, well, I don't know a whole lot about this thing, but he said, I'm saved. And he said, do you go to church anywhere? He said, well, sometimes. He said, looks like you need to get back in is all I've got to say. <laughs> he just gave him some rough illustrations. But he did say, he told me, he said, you know what? Well, very long time, he told me he got his life right with God. 18 years working by a guy that was lost and never even knew it. Folks, we don't want to do that. God help us. Hey, people's lives are in jeopardy of an eternity in a lake of fire. That's right. We've got to let them know. But we, we don't make them uh, get saved. I mean, you, you don't force nobody to do nothing, but we are to be I mean, if someone's hungry, we're going to pass the plane to them. I mean, Amen. The table. <clears throat> but we are at least make an offer to someone lost and let them know that Jesus was. Amen. Amen. Who are the overcomers? The only overcomer in this world in human flesh are those who are born of God through the new birth. That's all it was. So folks, we really need to stop and think about who we are, where we are, and what we're doing. Well, I felt pretty bad for the last year. I can't even talk to nobody at the clinic. I, I have. I went down, but I got some glasses, and I went in, and the little lady that worked for the doctor, they found out what I needed. Uh, she wanted to come over and pick out some frames. So we went over there, and I said, can I ask you a question? And she said, yeah. And I always try to start, start on a low key. I said, do you go to church anywhere? Oh yeah, she said, I go to church. I said, that's wonderful. That's pretty great. Could I ask you another question? She said, well, sure. I said, have you ever accepted Christ? I say, she said, yes, sir, I'm a Christian. You know, you don't have to be a mathematician to ask the question. Or two. They may start close. Ask them to go to church. They say, yeah, then you can. Well, are you saved? I mean, you don't have to be no theologian. So me and her had a real conversation, and when I left, the lady that's, uh, uh, that one was stipulated. So when I left, the one working in the front up there, she was a celestial girl, and I, so I asked her, now talking to her. Oh yeah, she sure she was saved and told me where her church was at over in Boston and all about her pastor and all that stuff and got to talking to her real good. And I said, well, I said, you know what? I pastored uh, the Free Church, Indian Church. Oh, I never heard of that before. I said, well, most folks ain't. I said, it's real work woods, kind of get out. But I said, I, I'm going to go real close to a little town called Vernon. Oh, she said, I know where Vernon's at. I said, yeah, I knew from over here. I said, yeah, I've seen that sign. And she said, by the way, she said, my uncle pastors a church up at Vernon. I said, no kidding. Well, what's his name? So she told me. And I said, would you believe I preached in his church. Boy, her eyes got me. And I said, he's preaching in our church. I said, we have a fellowship together over there. I said, he's a great man. I love that man. She said, oh, praise the Lord. I said, you know what? You can have a good time just talking to me. Amen. Folks, we need to spread the word. Who's going to be an overcomer? 
Only those who have been born of God. We all have a mother. We don't all have God. And we need to be born of God. Let's pray. Father, we certainly love you this morning. We praise you for all that you do for us. You're so marvelous. You're so good. Just want to thank you, Lord, that you came to me when I was lost out in sin. <clears throat> Live a reckless life, walking like the rest of the world. God, you, you, you saved me. You brought me into the family. So I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for the church here today, for our people. I want to thank you, our Father, for those who love you and walk with you. Lord, help us to let other people know that there is a Savior waiting to save them. Father, you bless them, each and every one, and bless those that you're not to be here today for whatever reason. And we'll thank and praise you for everything you do in Jesus' precious and holy name.